Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about problem solving using quadratic functions. So this means application problems or word problems. So it's problems where we have to figure out our equation from the information that's given to us. So applications of quadratic functions include maximum height problems, maximum profit, and then minimum cost. So let's start with number problems. Let's say we want to find two numbers whose difference is six, but whose product is a minimum. So we want to multiply two numbers together, and those two numbers have a difference of six. So we're just going to let our first number be x. And since the two numbers have a difference of six, our second number is going to be x minus six. Again, the product is going to be the first number times the second number, so we get x, our first number, times x minus six, our second number. We're gonna go ahead and put that into work form. So the first thing we had to do is distribute our x, so x times x is x squared, x times negative six is negative six x, and so we're gonna take half of negative six, which gives us three, and then three squared is nine, which means we're gonna add nine inside the parentheses and subtract nine on the outside of the parentheses. And then when we go ahead and do x squared minus six x plus nine, that factors to our perfect squared x minus three squared. Now that we have our work form, we can get our vertex, which is three comma negative nine. Now remember, in the ordered pair hk, the first value is the x value, and the second value is the y value. Now, why the x value tells us what our first number is, the y value doesn't tell us what the second value, the second um, number is. Remember, the y value stands for the product, the first number times the second number. So, in order to find two numbers whose difference in six, whose product is a minimum, we're looking for three times a number that's equal to negative nine. So we end up with three times negative three equals negative nine. So those would be our two numbers. Now let's look at the path of a projectile. Some problems are going to give you the equation and that's gonna be awesome because all you have to do, take the equation they give you, put it into work form and interpret the results. So for example, let's say we have an arrow and it's shooting straight up with an initial velocity of 320 feet per second. So at the very beginning, 320 per second is the velocity. We're discarding air res resistance here, so don't even think about gravity or anything like that. We have the motion of the arrow is given by the equation h of x equals negative 16x squared plus 320x, where x is the time in seconds. And h of x is the height of the arrow, height of the arrow. So it looks like x is time and y is height. That's pretty typical in word problems. We want to know what is the maximum height and how long is it going to take to get us so, to that maximum height? Step one, we find the maximum by putting our equation in work form. So the equation they gave us was h of x equals negative 16x squared plus 320x. So the first thing we want to do, factor out that, neg that negative 16, which gives us negative 16 times x squared minus 20. Now we're going to complete the square. So we get half of 20 is 10, squared is 100. So remember, if we're adding 100, we're not just adding 100, we're adding 100 times negative 16. So we're actually subtracting 1600. And if we're subtracting 1600, that means we have to add 1600 on the outside. So now we can have our perfect square giving us negative 16 times x minus 10 squared. And then we still have that plus 1600. So now step two, state the maximum by giving our vertex. We have our maximum. Our maximum is 10 comma 1600. And when we interpret it, remember that our x was our time in seconds. So we're saying after 10 seconds, the projectile will be at the maximum height of 1600 feet. And of course, that means that we are ignoring air resistant as it was instructed. And where you have to use that 92 feet of fence, and we wanna give the maximum area for this dog. So we have to figure out the dimensions 
of this fence. Now remember, area is, is area is length times width. For perimeter, which is what we're using the fence for, because remember the fence is the perimeter around the area, the perimeter is going to be 2 times the width plus 2 times the length. And they told us that that perimeter is 92 feet. So remember, they, they told us that we only have 92 here. feet. 2L plus 2W, our perimeter, is equal to 92, the amount of fence that we have. So we're going to go ahead and solve. We're going to go ahead and solve for W and put it in terms of length. So W is going to be equal to 46 minus L, 46 minus length. And the reason we do that is because when we plug it into our formula, area equals length times width, instead of saying A is equal to L times W, now that I've solved for W in terms of L, instead of saying L times W, I can say L times 46 minus L. And times negative. So I'm really subtracting 529, which means I have to add 529 on the outside. So now I can rewrite as a perfect square. I get negative L minus 23 squared, then plus 529. So step two, state the maximum point by giving the vertex. My vertex for this, for this is 23 comma 529. So remember that 23 is our length. Okay, if we find width, we let width equal 46 minus L. So we're going to substitute 23, which was our length, for L to figure out our width. So width is 46 minus 23, which gives us 23. So that tells us when length is 23 and width is 23, we get a maximum area of 529. Next question. Let's say we're building a fence, but we're building it against a shed. So we only have 52 feet of fencing. However, we get to use a side of the shed for part of the fencing. And we need to know what are the dimensions have to mentions have to be to get your maximum area. So look at it like this. You know, we have length and length, but instead of having two widths, we only have one width because the other width is the shed. So our perimeter is going to change. Instead of saying 2L plus 2W equals 52, we have 2L plus just 1W equals 52, well, which means w, w, it's going to be W equals 52 minus 2L. Now we can go ahead and substitute our new W and for our formula for area, remember area is length times width. So we have area is equal to length times 52 minus 2L, since 52 minus 2L is the same as width. Now we're going to go ahead and put in a work form. So the first thing we do, distribute the I, or sorry, distribute the L. So we get 52L minus 2L squared. I'm going to rewrite that and get negative 2L squared plus 52L. So our next step is going to go ahead and factor out that negative 2, leaving us L squared minus 26L inside the parentheses. So from there, we're almost done. We still have to continue putting it into work form. We're going to go ahead and ha take half of 26, which is 13, and square it, giving us 169. But remember, we're not just adding 169 in the parentheses. We're adding 169 times negative 2, which means we're actually subtracting 338, which means we have to add 338 on the outside. Now we have a perfect square, which means we can rewrite it as negative 2 times L minus 13 squared plus 338, giving us a vertex of 13, 338, which tells us that when the length is 13, we get maximum area of 338. And since W is 52 minus 2L, the width would be 52 minus 2 times 13, which is our length, which is equal to 26. So we would have a width of 26. All right, now let's look at a problem where we are maximizing our income. 
We want to be able to get the most income as possible. So we have a company that's selling 50 CD players every day. Every day they're selling 50, 50 CD players and they're selling them for $60 each. So they figured out that if every time they increase the price by $4, so every time they go up $4, their sales reduce by 2 they sell two less units. Instead of selling 50, they're gonna sell 48 if they increase by $4. So we wanna know, find the maximum daily income from the sales and the price they should charge to get it. So most important part of these problems is naming your variables. The variables are always, are always the same. We're gonna let X be the number of price increases. And so income, the way that we figure out our income is how many CD players are we selling and how much are we selling them for? If we can figure that out, we can figure out how much money we're getting. Well, if our original price is 60 and our original unit sold is 50, our original income was the $60 times the 50 CD players sold, which tells us our original income was $3,000. Now we've got a new price. We know that we're gonna charge $60 and we're gonna increase by $4 at a time, but we don't know how many times we're gonna increase. Remember that's X. The number of times we increase is X. So our new price is gonna be $60 plus $4 times an unknown times we're going to increase. So 60 plus 4X. Our new unit sold is going to be 50 because we originally sold 50, but remember, the unit sold is going down every time we increase, and it's going down by two. So we're gonna subtract two times the number of times we increase, or two X. So new unit sold becomes 50 minus two X. So our new income, and remember income is price times units sold. So price, our new price is 60 times four X, and new unit sold, 50 minus two X, that's our new income. So if we're gonna go ahead and FOIL that out or by box method, you come up with the equation negative 8x squared plus 80x So if I can put that into work form, I can get my vertex, which will give me my maximum. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and isolate our x squared and our x, giving us negative 8 squared plus 80x in parentheses. Factor out the negative 8, leaving us x squared minus 10x inside. And then we're gonna go ahead and do half of B, so half of 10, which is five, and then square it, giving us 25. So we're gonna add 25 inside the parentheses. But remember, we're not just adding 25, we're adding 25 times negative eight, which is negative 200, or minus 200. So that means we have to add 200 on the outside. And then we go ahead and get our perfect square, giving us negative eight times X minus five squared, plus 3,200. So our vertex is 5, 3,200, which tells us, remember X was the number of increases. So we have five increases, five $4 increases will give us the maximum income of $32. Let's look at another problem. Let's say you have a trolley and this trolley is charging $6 for a round trip, $6 for a round trip. And right now, they are serving 240 tourists. So 240 tourists are paying this $6. And the owner wants to maximize profit. And so he notices every time he increases by a dollar, so going from six to seven or seven to eight, every time he increases the price by a dollar, he loses 15 customers. So he starts at 240, but if he increases by a dollar, it's gonna be some minus 15. And every time he increases by a dollar, he's gonna minus 15. So he wants to figure out what should he charge and still get the maximum amount of profit. He should charge his people to ride the tolly. All right, those are all the examples that I have for you. Make sure that you took adequate notes. That's what I'm going to be grading when I see you in class. Other than that, just make sure you look over the video and you have a good understanding. Thank you, I hope you have a good day. how much